Although you can immediately record audio with Logic Pro X, sometimes you'll want to change its default recording settings. Some settings do not affect the quality of the audio recording, but can alter the behavior of your project during recording, or change the audio file format used for recording. The next few exercises will show you how those settings affect the audio recording process and explain how to modify them. We begin by setting the counting. The counting is the time you have to prepare yourself and get into the groove before the recording actually starts. So we begin, we begin by setting the counting. The counting is the time you have to prepare yourself and get into the groove before the actual recording begins. I'll begin by closing my previous project and opening a new one. We'll close, don't save, have a new project, select a track. And in the control bar, click the counting button to turn the counting on and off. If I turn the counting off and start recording, the recording starts straight away. If I now turn the counting on, you'll see that the recording gives me a bar of counting before it starts recording. does this because under the record menu counting is set to one bar. If I need a longer counting I can select more bars or I can also select, select time signature. Next we'll look at setting the metronome. By default the metronome is turned off during playback and automatically plays during recording. In this exercise you will change the default behaviors using the metronome button and later go into the metronome settings to adjust its sounds. So in the control bar, click the metronome button to turn it on and start playback. The metronome is on. Stop playback and start record. The metronome is on. While Logic is still recording, turn off the metronome. The metronome is off and stop recording and then the metronome is back on. You have, you have now in, inverted the default behavior. The metronome is on during playback and is automatically turned off during recording. So in the control bar, control click the metronome button and deselect click while playing. The metronome is now off regardless of whether you're playing or recording. Control click the metronome button and choose metronome settings and the metronome settings window opens. There are settings for two metronomes, audio click and MIDI click. And you can see that the audio click is on and the MIDI click is off. Under the name of each metronome, you can adjust the pitch and velocity of the notes playing on each bar and beat. You can play a sound on every division, which can be useful when you're working with very slow tempos. In the metronome setting window, select the click while playing. Go to the beginning of the song and start playing. And the metronome sounds a little low, perhaps we can change it. In fact, we can adjust the volume and the tone. And you can hear the metronome sound changes and you can still hear the pitch. Adjusting the tonality of the metronome is important. A pitch sound will better cut through a busy mix, but it will also bleed through the musician's headphones into the micro microphone. A more muted sound, so the slider more towards the left, is more suitable for quiet mixes in which you can't tolerate any metronome bleed. So you can adjust the metronome so that it is loud and clear. And when a project already contains a drum track, you may need the metronome only during the counting to get into the groove before the song starts. So at the top of the metronome settings under options, select click while recording 
and only during counting. Close the settings window. Go to the beginning of the project and press R for record. When communicating with the audio interface, Logic does not receive or transmit just one sample at a time. It places a number of samples in an input buffer for recording in and output button. When communicating with the audio interface, Logic does not receive or transmit just one sample at a time. It places a number of samples in an input buffer for recording and in an output buffer for monitoring. When a buffer is full, Logic processes or transmits the entire buffer. The larger the buffers, the less computing power is required from the CPU. The advantage of using larger input and output buffers is that the CPU has more time to calculate other processes, such as instrument and effects plugins. The drawback to using a larger buffer is that you may have to wait a bit for the buffer to fill before you can monitor your signal. This means a longer delay between the original sound and the one you hear through logic, a delay called round trip latency. Usually you want the shortest possible latency when recording and the most available CPU processing power when mixing so that you can use more plugins. You can adjust the IO buffer size depending on your situation. To choose logic, preferences, audio and the audio preference pane opens. The default buffer size is one to eight samples, which should have a latency of about 10 to 20 milliseconds for most devices. So from the IO buffer size uh, pop-up menu, choose 32 and the latency is now shorter. Click apply and the core engine is initialized with a 32 sample IO buffer. Now close the preference window. To monitor the impact of the IO buffer size on the CPU, you need to customize the control bar to display the CPU meter. So in the control bar, click the small arrow to the right of the LCD display and choose custom. The LCD display now displays more information, including the CPU and HD meters to the right. Double click on the CPU uh, or HD meters and the CPU HD window appears with more detailed meters. If your Mac has a multi-core CPU, you can see a meter for each core. The Project Audio browser shows all the audio files and audio regions that have been imported or recorded in your project. During a recording session, the focus is on capturing the best possible performance, and you may want to avoid burdening yourself with the decision-making that comes with deleting bad takes. You may also have several unused audio files in the Project Audio browser that make the project package or folder bigger than it needs to be. So in this exercise, you will select and delete all unused files from your hard drive. So in the control bar, click the browsers button or press F and ensure that the project tab is selected. The project audio browser opens listing all the loops that you've used and all the files that you've recorded. For each file, the info column shows the sample rate, the bit depth, the format icon, so a single circular indicates a mono file, uh, two together is stereo, and file size. Click the disclosure triangle in front of the audio file name to display the audio regions referring to that audio file. And in the workspace, select any audio regions you don't want to keep and then press delete. If a delete alert app uh, alert appears, select keep and click OK. It's gonna go through all of them. 
So the regions are removed from the workspace, but their parent audio files are still present in the project audio browser. From the project audio browser menu, choose edit and select unused or shift U. And all the audio files that do not have an associate region in the workspace are selected. Once you feel satisfied that the selected audio files do not contain any useful material, you can delete them. And you can choose audio file and delete to get rid of them. An alert asks you if you want to confirm the deletion, so we're going to click delete. And the audio files are removed from the project audio browser and placed in the trash.